Okay, now it's time to add uh, some more CSS effects to our website. Here's what I have so far in mind, and I'm, I'm going to have more than just this content, just text. I'm going to have some pictures as well in here, so I'm going to change this up a bit. So we're going to use Dreamweaver CSS uh, abilities to make this a little more interesting to look at. So I'm going to cut that text out of there. I'm going to go to my layout menu, and I'm going to insert an AP div tag in the middle here. So I might have some area here for photos or text. First, I'm just going to draw, draw a box right in there. I'm going to make it a black background. That's my new AP div 3. And I'm going to paste my text right in there. Go into edit rule, and I'm going to change my font color to white, just so it stands out a bit. That background didn't take before. Let's see if that works. There we go. Now this is also where we can add our padding. If you click under box, add some. Notice the same for all is right there. So if I hit apply, it makes it look a little more sophisticated. Notice it resized my box. And when we click on the edge of this for, uh, the border of our box, notice you can now see the padding with this uh, the hash marks on it. I'm going to resize this, reposition it, and I'm going to take a look. I'll save my changes. And there we go. Not bad, but we can still make this even a little bit cooler. Now, so far, when we click on things, we've been uh, changing the CSS properties by clicking Edit Rule. Another way of doing it is to, uh, if you go over here on the left-hand side, you can bounce between, uh, look at what your current one has. That's not as useful, but uh, these are all our CSS rules. So I have my header, nav, article, footer. Yours might be listed as AP div boxes. I'm going to click on here. That's my AP div box 3. So I'm going to find that somewhere in here. Okay, there it is. It's hiding out on the bottom. So I'm going to click on AP div 3 and pull this up just to give us some more room. These are all the CSS items I currently have in, uh, in place for that. So I can go to Edit Rule, but there's even more if I just click on Edit Property. If you look at this list, these are all of the built-in CSS things that we can add. So there's quite a lot there. One I want to do is maybe round the corners on this. So I'm going to try uh, Border Radius. And notice it, it, I can type something in directly but I also have an option just to click in here. So I'm going to make this, uh, I'll go up to 20. And click OK. And let's take a look. Make sure I have that same for all. All right. So let me save and preview. And check that out. So I hope we get some rounded corners. So that's another option you can use. Also, we can do the same with text as well. Saying I wanted to put in a, a heading somewhere. And I'll just do for this for example. I'm going to uh, let me make this a little smaller. I'm going to put a heading right up here. Welcome to my beautiful website. Okay, so what I can do is highlight that. <coughs> and then if I wanted to add an HTML to it, I click on HTML down here, and I'm just going to make this a uh, heading. So I can go back to CSS change all kind of stuff. And this is going to be something that's brand new. 
And what this is used for, these CSS rules, if we would look at a previous page we did, we've used H1 tags before. But this is for when we want to have separate items, sort of subcategories. And we want to use the dot. So I'm going to go back in here, and I can give a new name for my uh, selector. So I'm going to call this one first, just in case I wanted several types of H1 tags. And then I could OK. And notice this is our new rule first, and it's going to show up here as well. There it is. So all I've done is change the color, but we can also add uh, a drop shadow to our font as well. Let's look under, uh, I think it's font shadow or text shadow. There we go. So we can use a similar type of thing. Uh, you can change the color of it. If you want to drop, drop shadow in any specific color, I'll just throw in a light gray. And you can offset it. What the X and Y offsets mean is if you think it's sort of like where you would position the sun for a shadow. So if the sun's up here, our shadow's going to come across down there. So we're kind of like by using the offset, it's the X and Y coordinates. So the higher the number goes, the sun is moving to the right. Uh, the higher the Y goes, I believe it's moving down. Depends if you're using Cartesian coordinates or uh, website coordinates. So just play with a little bit. And I can click on my live design to see that it works. And got a nice drop shadow, but maybe I want to make it a little blurrier. So I'm going to click on here, add my blur, and see what happens there. There. Make it a little blurrier. Use that with uh, discretion because the last thing you want to do is make it less, uh, less readable. So from here, I'm going to take a look at my website, save my changes, and maybe I want to make some, uh, now's the time to go in and start uh, adding more text and pictures and start polishing things up. Notice I have padding on these three sides, but nothing down here. Or maybe I want a rounded corner just on this corner and that corner. CSS gives us the ability to do that. Yeah, we want to start going through adding some uh, padding, outlines, margins, Whenever you need to start making this look good. Now notice, I have a lot of uh, space over here on the right. By hitting Control minus, I can zoom out. At this point, I might want to start scooting my web page over so that it, uh, it fits a little bit better, as opposed to hugging this left side. Remember, you're designing yours for your monitor. So that's what I'm going to look at uh, your websites on, is on your monitor. So don't worry about how it looks on anything else other than uh, those uh, 16 by 9 resolution monitors that you have.